Joining me right now is the Bonson Group CEO and managing partner, David Bonson. Kicking it off with you this morning, a pretty good story on, on interest rates in the journal this morning, noting that the yield on the 10-year is up to its highest level in a year. Does that create competition for stocks? Do you believe this is a sign to start diversifying out of stocks, putting more into fixed income? Um, I don't, but I certainly understand where the story comes from, because all things being equal, stocks have a greater value at a 1% tenure than they do at a 1.3% tenure. However, I don't believe for the life of me that there are investors out there saying, oh, I don't like bonds at 1%, but I do at 1.3%. The issue is whether or not the tenure is going to two and a half, and it's not. I don't think that the growth expectations or inflation expectations are going to command a tenure that moves that much higher. So relatively speaking, this higher yield is a bit of a story on the margins, but I would add, Maria, it's helping the large cap financial <laughs> sector. So it isn't an all negative, yeah. and I just think we have to take it in proportion. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great point. And, and after all, you're still just talking about 1.3%, which is pretty close to the bottom there. What about valuations within the market? I mean, obviously, you've got a situation around Boeing today. That's one issue. But then there's technology stocks have been the leadership group for so long. Valuations are up there right now. You still a buyer? No, I mean, we've not been a buyer of this big cap growth story and the FANG story. And, of course, that's, you know, been something that we've missed uh, for, for quite some time, although it's not within our dividend growth philosophy to begin with. But that rotation theme is one that we very much buy into. And I've used this analogy over and over again recently about 1999 into 2000 that the Nasdaq dropped 70 percent and the Dow was actually up which is just a staggering story if you think about it. Um, last week, you had the Nasdaq down about 1%. The S&P was down pretty good. The Dow was up a little bit. This sort of disconnection between big tech and the rest of the market is a healthy story. It isn't like tech is dropping precipitously, but a repricing of really expensive Nasdaq stocks does not necessarily mean that some of the undervalued sectors, consumer staples, real estate, utilities, have to suffer. And frankly, I don't think that they will. Yeah. What about the stimulus plan? Uh, let's talk about lawmakers gearing up for a House vote on the proposed $1.9 trillion stimulus bill Friday. This coming as the Biden administration announces plans for changes to the PPP loans in order to better assist small business. The changes include focusing on minority owned businesses as well as those with difficulty getting forgivable loans. David, all of the stimulus, we're talking about now $5 trillion in just about a year when you include this $1.9 trillion deal. Uh, stimulus coming into the economy, a good thing? Well, you know, I don't, it's funny when you talk about helping out minority owned businesses. To me, one of the great things they could do to help would be letting these businesses reopen. Um, but I digress. I think that the uh, level of the stimulus bill is very high and a lot of the composition is very inefficient. I like the idea of more targeted uh, attention around PPP and particularly some specific help to the restaurant and hospitality industry. But the whole issue about trying to pack in minimum wage and, and some of the other things that they're looking to do, I, I don't think is very useful in this conversation. But all of this politically is a total non-story. It's absolutely going to pass. They're going to get this thing rammed through, not with the minimum wage, but the rest of it through budget reconciliation. So I don't think there's a lot of suspense there. And, and I just hope that it, on the margin it can be improved before it does. Yeah, but you know what? You make a really good point. Brian Brenberg will jump in here real quick because this is an issue we've talked about before. The real stimulus is opening up the economy. And so you could keep throwing money at the problem. But until we actually see a normalized economy, you're not going to get the GDP you're looking for. Yeah. You know, and to David's point, you know, I've been reading some of David's uh, writing recently. He's been talking a lot about the <coughs> expectation that the economy opens much sooner than anyone's thinking, mostly because people have had it. And once the vaccine's out there, they're going to get back out there and spend. So I know, David, you're high in consumer staples. Tell us a little bit more about what you think the earlier potential reopening could mean for markets. 
Yeah, I think that it's a good point, Brian. The markets have sort of priced in an expectation of economic improvement and economic reopening, but it's hard to know exactly what pace that will happen. And I think it's going to be at a faster pace than people expect, not just because of some of the regulatory aspects and not even just because of the vaccine success, all of which are good. It's just that the people have basically said we're kind of over this. And so now you get this ongoing pressure. And, and frankly, you're seeing some capitulation. Uh, you're seeing some of the local mayors and governors kind of throw in the towel. And I think that that's a good thing for economic acceleration and will play itself out in some of the underperforming services sectors. All right, David, we'll leave it there. It's great to see you this morning, David. Come back soon.